Hi guys, welcome to a DIY video. I am going to be showing you how I made my photo ledge, my art ledge, my photo shelf in a step-by-step -step process. And I'm going to be showing you exactly what materials I used and going through everything step-by-step -step with you. Someday. What you will need is two one by four boards cut to your desired length, one one by two board for the front lip, wood glue, two inch wood screws, a drill, stain in the color of your choice, clamps two to four depending on the length and then the optional items are two inch finishing nails wood filler if you decide to use the finishing nails and sandpaper if you decide to sand it you do not have to do these steps but i chose to i chose weathered oak by verathane as my stain and then i also bought polyurethane to seal everything but i didn't end up using it and then i'm using a walnut colored plastic wood wood filler you do not have to do all the steps that I'm doing, but I'm going to take you through everything that I did to build my shelf and to hang it up. In your first things first, measure the area that you want your shelf to be. I wanted mine to be above the couch and between my two windows, and it ended up being about five feet in length. The beauty of this shelf is that you can make it as long or as short as you want it to. I had already purchased the wood and we have a saw at home so I'm just taking the measurements and measuring out the wood to make sure it is exactly how I want it to be. If you do not have a saw at home, you can have your wood cut at Home Depot or Lowe's when you go to purchase the wood. Take your time, fall in line someday. It's hard to win. The next step is to do the wood glue. I am using the Tight Bond Premium Wood Glue. I got this at Home Depot and this stuff is water resistant. It's for interior and exterior projects. It has a fast set time and you're just going to want to run a bead down the length of your wood panel piece where you want the lip attached and then you're going to go in if you're doing the finishing nail step if you have a nail gun or if you're going to use a hammer and nails, you will put your piece on and then you will put the finishing nails on. I had my husband use his nail gun to put the finishing nails on. We chose to use the finishing nails just to make sure it was extra tight on there. If you have wood glue coming out from putting the nails on or the clamps on, don't worry. You can just wipe it up and then you can sand it off later or choose not to sand it, but it does wipe off very easily. Our next step was to put the back piece on and then my husband went in with the nail gun and the finishing nails again and just put finishing nails all along the back side of it. And then we clamped everything down and I wiped up any excess glue that had oozed out. Once you are done clamping, you have to let the glue sit for at least 30 minutes per the recommendations on the wood glue bottle. And then you can remove your clamps and then if you are going to sand, this would be the time to start sanding everything. I'm using 100 grit medium grit sandpaper and a sanding block. I do not have a sander, so I'm going to be sanding everything by hand. Obviously, if you have a sander, this would be so much quicker and so much easier, but if you are doing it old school, you can use the sanding block and sandpaper like I am. I'm just gonna make sure every edge is smooth, make sure everything's smooth, especially those end pieces, and then sand off any of that excess glue that had oozed out from before. You don't have to sand it, I just chose to because I just wanted to have a smoother look. Now I'm going in with the wood filler in a walnut color. I'm just going to apply a little bit to my finger and then I'm just going to dab it on the areas where those finishing nails were in the front panel, not in the back piece at all, just in that front lip. I'm just going to put it on my finger and apply it to each little hole just as if I was going to patch up a little hole in the drywall with spackle. And then I wiped away any excess with a paper towel. That is so real. Oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to heal. 
per the instructions on that wood filler container, you have to let it sit for a minimum of two and a half hours to let it set and dry. So I just let it sit overnight because by the time I was finished with everything in the garage, it was dinner time and I've got two kiddos to take care of. So I went in the next day and I just sanded everything down from that wood filler just to make sure it's all flush and even with the wood. And then I laid out a drop cloth. I have my Varathane wood stain in the weathered oak collar and I'm going to be using a disposable paint tray just in case my clumsiness, I knock over the stain. I don't want it to get everywhere all over the garage. And then I am also going to be using paper towels to apply the stain. It's much cheaper than using a stain brush or a paint brush and it is just what I had on hand. I just dip the paper towel in and then I go with the grain and just wipe it all along the wood pieces. If you are using a paintbrush or a stain brush, make sure that you have a rag or a paper towel on hand so that you can wipe up any of the excess stain, anything that's dripping, and then just give it a good wipe. You don't want your wood piece to be completely saturated and completely wet with stain. A little bit goes a long way, so use it sparingly. You do not need a huge container of stain to do this art ledge, even if you do one that is longer than mine. You can always go back in and add another coat of stain if you want to. I did end up doing two coats, or you could always end up going in with a different stain color as well and changing the color up. As you can see here, this is the difference between stained and non-stained. You do not have to stain your piece. I chose to because I just wanted a different color look than the actual red oak that I was using. This is how the color turned out after letting it sit for a while and to dry. I let it sit overnight because it was really strong and I didn't want to bring something with such a strong fume into the house. As you can see here, it is time to finally hang it up. I'm in a different outfit. It's a different day. It's fine. We're just trying to figure out where exactly we want the shelf to be. We didn't want it super high, but we also didn't want it low enough that the kids could knock anything off of it or hang from the shelf. So I am just measuring exactly the height that we decided on. And then we are going to map out where we want it hung, how we want it hung. And my husband is using a level to make sure that we are mapping out a level area for this ledge. We also measured from the end of the window to the end of the ledge to make sure that each side was even. We didn't want it uneven, so we're just adjusting everything. And then we basically just marked off everything around the ledge so that we had the exact spot to put it. Then we went in and we found the studs. My husband is marking off each stud and just making sure that we know exactly where our studs are because we are going to be using those to secure this ledge to the wall. It's the only way to go I've been waiting for the fallout The next thing my husband did was measure to find the center of each of those outer studs so that when we were drilling the screws in, they were going into the exact center. So he took those measurements, he took the measurements that he took and marked off the wood exactly where we needed to screw it in. And then we just got everything ready to be secured to the wall. We made sure it was all level. I held it up. He drilled pilot holes before drilling the wood screws in to the ledge and the studs. And then he also went the extra step to take a drill bit and drill a little hole, I guess you would say, 
where the screws were going to go in so that when they did go in they were more inset or more flush so that you could use wood filler to cover those up. You don't have to because obviously this is an art photo ledge you're going to be covering them up anyways but if you wanted to do that this gives you the option. And this is the final result. I am so incredibly pleased with it. I haven't done a DIY project in forever and I am just loving the way this turned out. It is so cute and it just adds that little extra oomph to our living room that we so badly needed. For anyone that is interested, I will try my best to link everything that I have on the shelf down below. Everything is super affordable. Hobby Lobby, Etsy, Ikea, Target, a little vase is from Hobby Lobby, the flower is from Ikea, the white frame with the lips, the frame is from Ikea, the print is from Etsy for like $2, the love what you do is from Hobby Lobby, 40% off coupon, can't beat it. The green leafy print is also from Hobby Lobby. The little succulent is from Ikea. It was $1.50. And then the cactus print is also from Etsy. That wooden frame is from Target. It was $4. The other white frame is the same as the one with the lips. That is from Ikea. And then it's just a picture that I had on hand. Candlesticks are from Hobby Lobby and the candles are from Target. Can't beat it. Everything was super affordable. I hope that you guys enjoyed this DIY video. It was so fun to make and I am so happy with how everything turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you are new here. Have an amazing day and I'll catch you in the next video.